Etymology. 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 The word polymer is used to describe the molecules that plastics are made up of. It's actually a portmanteau of two Greek words, poly meaning many and miros meaning parts. So it's literally a long chain of many smaller parts. If you look at Google Books Ngrams, which by the way is almost as fun as the Oxford English Dictionary online, almost, not quite, but it's close. If you look at the engrams for the word polymer, you'll notice that it kind of starts to skyrocket after about 1922 when the structure for polymers was actually first determined. So it would be fairly logical to assume that the guy that discovered polymers in the first place would be the one to coin the term, right? Strangely, no. All right, here is round two of Chemistry 101. Back in the 1800s, it was pretty much impossible to be 100% sure of the structures of organic molecules. Scientists could tell what was there based on a bunch of known reactions, and they could also tell in what proportions those things were there based on weighing stuff. So you could say for sure that your compound had carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and you could also say for sure in what proportions those elements were there. But the way in which they were connected together in space Space? Yeah, not so much. So chemists actually classified things into groups based on what was there and in what proportion. The one with the lowest number of elements was called, and is called still today, the empirical formula. So for example, formaldehyde, that super fun and super toxic chemical used to preserve specimens in jars and museums, has the chemical formula CH2O. Glucose, the basic fuel for our bodies, is a much larger molecule. It has the chemical formula C6H12O6. Now, if you take all of those little numbers in the glucose formula and then divide them by six, you get the formula for formaldehyde. In the 1800s, the word polymer was used to describe large molecules that had the same empirical formula as something smaller. So glucose was thought to be made of six formaldehydes. Glucose was therefore a polymer of formaldehyde. Once chemistry advanced a little bit and we started figuring out ways to determine structure more accurately, it was discovered that this was extremely very definitely not the case. For example, the smallest unit in glucose is glucose. But plastics, it was found, fit this definition a little bit better. Plastics are made up of long chains of repeating units. So Staudinger proposed that we change the definition a bit and start applying it to plastic, to long chains of repeating units. And it's stuck and hasn't actually changed since 1922. We'll be back on Friday with another episode in our History of Plastic series, so make sure you click the like button, subscribe, click the notification button, do all of the clicking. Also, you can check out my blog for links to extra content and links to other things that I'm doing around the interwebs. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Snapchat, where you can actually also suggest other words for this etymology series. We'll be back next week with another one. It's going to be fun. I mean, anything that involves me sitting down and talking about word history stuff and drinking tea is a huge bonus in my book. So please make sure you subscribe so I can keep doing it. That would be nice. That would be delightful. Please do that. <laughs>